well. Mother, I don't wonder at it. It's like her. God bless her. But how could Donya? Donya, darling, as though I did not know you. You were nearly 20 when I last saw you. I understood you then. Ned, her writes that Donya can put up with a great deal. I know that very well. I know that two and a half years ago, and for the last two and a half years, I have been thinking about it. I think of just that, that Donya can put up with a great deal. If she can put up with Mr. Seville de Grave and all the rest of it, she certainly can put up with a great deal. And now mother and she have taken it to their heads that she can put up with Mr. Luzin, who propounds the theory of superiority of wives raised for destitution and owing everything to their husband's bounty, who propounds it almost at their first interview, granted that he let it slip, though he is a sensible man. Maybe it was not at the first interview, granted that he let it slip, but it was meant to make himself clear as soon as possible. But Donya, Donya, she understands the man, of course, but she will have to live with the man. Why? Donya, she will have to live with the man. She'd live on bread and water. She would not sell her soul. She was not barter her moral freedom for comfort. She would not barter it at all. Solskin Holston, much less Ludson's money. No, Donya was not that sort when I knew her. She's still the same. Of course, there is no denying that Spill de Grave is a bitter pill. It's a bitter thing to spend one's life as a governess in the provinces for 200 rubles. But I know she would rather be a slave in a plantation or a let with a German master than degrade her soul or her moral dignity. But binding herself forever to a man she does not respect or with whom she has nothing in common? for her own advantage. And if Mr. Luzin had been of unalloyed gold or one huge diamond, she would never have consented to because to become his legal concubine. Why is she consenting then? What is the point of it? What the answer, it's clear enough for herself 